Fuck me and my fucking asshole, everybody. We're back with more Rixty Minutes. Me, the I best guy ever, and Digibro. Fuck, bitch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're on episode seven of season three. You got it. Of this shit. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. They, there was no episode last week. That really threw me for a fucking loop. Same, I was same. not prepared. <laughs> um, but... But boy, did we get a doozy back. this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this episode... It was the one. This it was the is, one. This one was heavy. It sure was, dude. It sure um, was. I was going to watch it again for this podcast mm-hmm. because there was so much going on, but I kind of couldn't bring myself to. Really? Because hmm. I did not... F- I, like, uh, I mean, this episode is fun and entertaining, as they all are, but mm-hmm. it also... It's got stuff to say. You know, no doubt about and that. It, it leaves you on kind of a down note, and it's one of those episodes that I had to like stand outside and <laughs> have a smoke with that chaos, chaos song stuck in my head, yeah, and and, and be like, God, fuck, man, the world. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's some heavy shit, dude. It's got so fucking real in in multiple yeah. dimensions, in multiple ways. You know, in Rick and Morty continuity terms, and in uh, uh, real nigga shit terms. You know. Yeah. Well, first, I want to say about this. Mm-hmm. This show, um, I I kind of like the way that Rick and Morty will abuse its premise. This show, basically, because of the fact that this is a nihilistic thrill ride that this show doesn't give a fuck about anything and it's already established (laughs) literally everything is possible Mm because we're in we're in the multiverse the infinite multiverse every possibility will happen Mm -hmm. and the show really takes advantage of that in this episode because everything about this Mm -hmm. citadel is like why would it be that way right but then it uh, but then like if in the infinite multiverse every possibility will happen then like it's all justified. Like there's just there's just a reason. There's a reason that one Rick is just like that. I don't know what that reason is, but there there is one oh, somewhere yeah. out there. Of course, of know. course. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And uh, it's it's just used to, to such great effect. And they're they're using them to tell. Uh, it, I mean, you know, it's been said, but th- th- really more than any episode before, to use the multiple clones of Ricks and Mortys in the way they're used in this episode is absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant. I I don't know if I've ever seen a story like it before, but I. I fucking love it, especially with the obvious racial parallels going on in the episode. Right. It's fucking intense. The racial parallels, but that don't necessarily, like, reflect any one racial right. mm-hmm. thing going... Like, like You could it's just kind call it class. Weird. You could call it a class divide instead if you wanted to, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's definitely... it's It makes a lot of different, like, commentaries on real-world stuff, but none that's specific enough to, like, say, oh, they're doing that. It's all, like, just... Like a vague gets into your mind, you know? Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's what I think is powerful about it is that it never made me think, oh, this is like a parallel for, I don't know, Black Lives Matter or something, which right, like another right. show would do. It's more like, I don't know, it, sp- it spoke to something more fundamental to me. I felt the like, same way. That this is how it's always been. And always will be. I thought it would know? have been so easy for them to to. I would honestly, my sensors were in full gear, looking for like uh, SJW cuck shit. I really was. I was I was on the lookout, knowing just, just as I was going through I the mean, episode, and I was not. I did not find myself in any way like able to to contest in any like. Uh, you know, just, 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 there was nothing to object to in the in the story that was presented here. Everything here was perfectly logical for the it's universe. Funny you say that. Uh-huh. I would say I was on the opposite side. I really? had an eye out for pushing a like conservative agenda or like liberty. Really? Because like I don't think this show has ever come off as being on the side of like uh, so- social justice. You know, you know, like, I he- Rick is not that kind of guy. You know what's interesting you know? about that? Uh, that that actually tells me something. I think uh, because I have been aware of the discussion going on lately about Dan Harmon sort of like uh, airing on the side. I I won't even say that he's like on the social justice warrior side, but he's like had some pretty pretty uh uh dis- pretty much discussed comments about how like. Trump right. is like a literal Nazi, or I, I can't honestly remember the exact quote I mean, that it was. I, I wouldn't been... be surprised mm-hmm. if that's the case. But Dan Harmon also himself mm-hmm. is a like Dan Harmon. Um, there's this. I, I haven't actually seen this. I'm talking about the second hand, so you're getting some real tertiary knowledge. Okay, here. okay. <laughs> but um, there's a documentary about Dan Harmon and this tour he did um, that Victor watched and told me about. Yeah, and like Dan Harmon is apparently like. 
he's he's self-aware about this fact, but he is a terrible fucking person really? who everyone hates, including himself. <laughs> I know like, that. I know that. <laughs> basically, he's a mess. Like, he's an alcoholic, mm -hmm. and he just has lots of, like, weird, like, pride issues, and he just kind of, like, flies off the handle and, like, gets mad at people really easily and all this hmm. stuff. And, like, hmm. he's just really hard to deal with. Okay. And he knows this fact. And, like, but that kind of perpetuates it even more. Like, he sees oh, right, himself right. as a bad guy, so he doesn't, like, try to be a good guy. Mm -hmm. But because he's self-aware, he can also write that into his characters right, somehow. Right. You know, it's it's amazing. Like, but uh, Victor was even saying in the documentary, they say, like, everyone thinks Community, for instance, was, like, mm -hmm. canceled for studio. Like, like that it wasn't popular enough. But apparently it was partly because, like, Dan Harmon's <laughs> shitty to work with and people can't survive, like, the process <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, Fascinating. But, but Harmon aside, who does, you know, he can err somewhat on the side of that stuff. But, mm -hmm, like, then mm -hmm. you look at Justin Roiland, who's just a fucking maniac. A maniac, and of course. Right. Would absolutely despise a social justice -y. I mean, this show's kind of made fun of social justice warriors before it, in, yeah, in yeah. some ways. You know, so, like... I, I never anything, really bought the argument that people were making that, like, I, I, when you're in sort of the... I don't even know if Dan Harmon is in the L.A. bubble or whatever, but when the, all the people around you are perpetuating the notion that, like, someone is a certain way or, you know, like, uh, the alt-right is full of, like, actual Nazis or, or just, like, that the, uh, that the country is being consumed by like nazi propaganda or something like i could see yeah. why someone would say something that could be interpreted maybe it's our fault for being so reactionary to the things he says for assuming that he's a nazi yeah. i don't i don't know the full context and, so maybe i'm the one who's in the wrong. i mean hate hating trump doesn't make you a fucking liberal cuck that is know? very true like, that's very true plenty of conservatives hate trump and might even think he's a fucking nazi but and speaking I, of trump uh this episode i mean I didn't think this going in, uh, but as soon as I was done and I just started looking up a little bit of information, what people were saying about it, the Trump parallels were everywhere. Of course. Of course they uh, were. Th people are so fucking stupid like, about that Like, this guy is shit, not man. Trump in... Like, this is a Machiavellian, like, evil genius mastermind. Is that what Trump is to you guys? Is it really? Do you really see the connection no. here? What the fuck? That's so stupid. No, this is obviously about the elite class. Exactly. Like the, exactly. the ruling class. This is... That's why I said like this felt to me like it was speaking to all time like Correct. this is not about Correct. current events you know like this is it's th that's why we keep getting the refrain throughout the episode like same old story morty's killing morty's same right, old story right. rick's killing morty's like this is the same old story that has been told for all time and like the 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 behind the scenes rick council is all corporate people mm -hmm. it's all mm -hmm. leaders of corporations it, like it, they're, they're they're the illuminati essentially exactly. that's right that's you know right. and like to me it had more parallels to like I don't know, I, like the way the room is designed and everything felt like a Greek society thing or just like this mm -hmm. all time felt timeless. It felt like this is how it's always been. Oh, well, of course, because like, again, I, I think the, the, the what I said before about like race is the obvious thing to go to when you watch this. But I really think it's more about class. This is really a yeah. class divide that we're seeing here between the bourgeois and the, the bourgeoisie and the, and the I mean, proletariat. The, the thing is, like, um, you know, there's a lot of. A lot of uh, a lot of free radical thinkers out there who yeah, will, uh, yeah. who talk about how the biggest and I I agree with this notion that the, the the biggest problem facing us is that everyone tries to make everything a race thing, but it is a class thing. Yeah, like, right, right. The real problems in our society are are more based around class and like impoverished people of all races mm -hmm. have the same issues. You know, exactly. Like, there might be more impoverished people who are black, but like everyone who's impoverished is facing these issues. And this episode kind of tackles that and that it's not just Mortys who are in this lower class. There's there's Ricks who mm -hmm. who have yeah. been put into like a low class situation and they are also fighting against it. And it's like it's everyone. It affects everyone. Like the I, the, the broken mm -hmm. system. The the difference between like Ricks and Mortys, like that does make sense on a racial basis. Cause like there like here, mm -hmm. like there's an obvious biological difference. And then of course you've got like my favorite character in this episode, like Cop Morty, who's a fucking like we'll get to that yeah. guy. He's my fucking hero. Uh only in a sick disgusting twisted way uh <laughs> but like but yeah like you've got him and then but parallel to him is of course the uh the factory worker rick who like yeah. despite having you know he's just as brilliant as every other rick it's the system that has put him into this slave wage job and has you know oppressed his individuality and his ability to be himself because by surrounding yourself by 
innumerable other Ricks. You rob yourself of anything that makes you special as an individual. And, uh, I mean, that's just one of the many themes that this episode touched on. Man, there's a lot in this fucking episode. There's a lot. This episode bounces all over the place. Because mm-hmm. it obviously wants to make as many statements as it can about this world. Yeah. That this little world it's introduced as it can before it leaves. And, I mean... This episode is a clusterfuck. Like, let's not let's get that out of the way too. It is totally a clusterfuck that all works in the best. It's like, it's, it's beautiful organized chaos. Like it all swirls yeah. into meaning in the end, and it's like that that final shot of all the devastation that has been wrought in like one yeah. day on the citadel, just specifically by I mean mostly by the villain, but really more importantly by the system in place. That now yeah. that was fucking. I, I don't want to over you, but Gazomp Kutzwerk. I mean, that's the wrong word, but I feel <laughs> no, like using it anyway. <laughs> I'm using it as a meme. I'm using it as the that, meme that version word has now. just come to mean masterpiece. It just means but good. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's B-Tong, been, you ruined it. It, it. We ruined it, to be fair, but <laughs> he used it right. Um, yeah, it was just, it was just a, a, a climactic moment. It was fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this episode is... This cap... We, we finally have the return... Of the plot thread, the one the important one. plot thread we've been waiting for the whole show. Which, okay, mm-hmm. so the first time I watched Rick and Morty Season 1, I was watching it on the Adult Swim website, mm-hmm. which accidentally played the episodes out of order. Um, <laughs> oh, good. It, goes, it went episode 1, 10, 11, and then played the rest. They fucking... So this was the, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> the second episode I ever saw was the Council of Ricks episode, mm-hmm. um, which establishes this character. So I, like, all through the show, I was expecting there to be, like, an ongoing plot line. Right, okay. Because I'd seen that episode. Um, and it never, you know, obviously it didn't get brought up again in season one because it was actually episode 10. Mm-hmm. Never got addressed in season two. Like, we still have the Council of Ricks, but this evil Morty that was revealed yep. at the end of season one, episode 10, has had no callback until the end of this episode twist, which was fucking awesome. You know... Because I didn't see it coming at all. That's interesting, because as soon as I saw that there was a Morty candidate running for office, I immediately knew where it was going. I called the rest of the episode and everything that was going to happen. That's interesting. I had no idea. It's good to know that that I am that much smarter than you. It feels good. It feels good. (laughs) Well, after he gave his speech, I thought something was up. Right. Like, there's... He's too good. Mm -hmm, Um... mm -hmm. And but I was I didn't figure out that it was gonna be him until the fucking song started playing and I was like oh you motherfucker. Well, see <laughs> to, to be fair, I, I I do get where the Trump parallels come from in one dimension because his whole thing was that he was just an absolute like populist, just telling the people what they wanted to hear and totally like abusing the weaknesses of democracy because he has his own private I agenda. I would consider that. I would say he was more like Obama to me. Hey, that's like, a good point. That's every, a good damn point. Everything he says is like like every word out of his mouth is change and hope yeah you you're know right. like you're that's right. how obama won was he just kept promising that like you know he he preyed on the fact that people thought the last eight years had been bad mm-hmm. and that if we change something it will be good not to mention you know? that morty is basically from the like repressed minority you know quote-unquote yeah. race of this exactly. world frankly obama is a perfect as, parallel uh-huh i saw him more as first black president you yeah, know? well, sure, sure. Because like, that like, like, we've said that the racial, the racial stuff in this episode isn't is not too direct, but like the most obvious parallel is Morty is Morty's are black, you yeah, know, of course, and like so for him to be the first Morty president is like okay, mm-hmm. this is the first black president, you know, mm-hmm. like to me it looked like a big Obama parallel, and Damn, you know dude. a lot of people That's would woke. say when Obama got in office it was basically. You know, like nothing really changed. Uh, yeah, especially now he, that we can look back at his legacy, we can bear witness yeah. to like the dealings he made with the financial system and like the elites exactly. at the expense of the lower people. Not to mention his record number of deportations of the immigrants that everyone thinks for some reason that Obama was a champion of, but actually wasn't. And uh, nope. and not to mention the countless drone strikes that he, you know, did way more than any president in history. If you- if anybody, if you're really woke, you know they're all the same. Yeah, all of yeah. them are yeah. the same. S-U-F-O is the only political party <laughs> that knows the truth. Mm-hmm. Shut up. Fuck off. So, yeah. They, yeah, I, I would say, again, I don't think it speaks to any one uh, situation or candidate. Right, this is just right. the whole system. This is what the system is. This is what it means to have a system. Correct. Is that the smart people are going to abuse it, mm-hmm. and the other, like anyone underneath them is going to be just slotted in somewhere. You're slotted into society wherever you happen to fit, and if you're not satisfied with that, you are just going to have a shit life, you know? Yep, yep. 
And, uh, yeah, this, uh, it, it's for, for me, the most, like what I was kind of stuck on throughout the whole episode was just like looking at a Rick in a position they're in and going like, how does one end up like, how does a Rick get here? But then I thought about it and like, like, how does any of us get where we are? It's just the circumstances mm. Mm. of our birth, right? You're like, right. I wouldn't say that, like, like you you might think, um, okay, we work, we, we're in a, 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 a I don't want to say an intellectual job, but a job that involves thinking, right? Right. right. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, we, we, we analyze things, we pull it apart. We're obviously not as smart as scientists. We're mm-hmm. not as smart as, mm-hmm. uh, as other, but then you have to wonder, well, some of those scientists aren't really that smart. They just studied more. They just have an aptitude for science, you know? Sure, but sure. maybe they're dumb about everything else. Well, what about a guy who's a blue-collar worker who might be smarter than us, but he just doesn't want to do b- frou-frou bullshit on the internet? <laughs> He'd rather fucking do something meaningful that helps the world, you know? Like like uh, like the dirty jobs mentality of, like, right, right. this is a job that has to get done. I'm proud to do it. So, like, when you think about it, people, it, it, you know, the fact that they're all Rick... It's it's not about being Rick. It's about what happened to Rick. Hey, that's what exactly happened right. to that's Rick exactly within right. his life. You know, the first Rick we're we're like introduced to in this episode is one called Simple Rick, yeah. who <laughs> realized at some point that his daughter was the most important thing to him and never became a super scientist. And so they captured him and replay his memory on loop for, for and, and extract <laughs> his fluids and put it in a candy so that you can taste what it feels like to be a simple person <laughs> which when they uh, bring that back at the end of the episode that uh-huh. was one of my biggest like standing ovation moments of the season so it was far. incredible like, it was incredible just, and i knew it was coming that one i did see like as soon as the guy came like the willy wonka rick right, came right. in mm-hmm. and was talking to him i was like what is this guy's angle and then as he's taking him out i'm like oh no oh no and then you hear the voiceover <laughs> so, yeah, and it's like yeah. you know this rick staged a and uh, uprising, I was like, "Oh, fuck!" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fuck. That was fucked up, man. Cycle that was never some ends. Shit. That was some 1984 shit right there. Like yeah, some, yeah, some real fucking Big Brother shit. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot. The, the cop, you want to talk about cop? cop rick and morty yeah they were uh they were i mean it was cool that we we see a rick as like the plucky up and coming like youngling to the uh to the experienced savvy morty who you know is basically more or less turned against his own kind you know again if you want to make like the the black parallel he's just like a black he's like um like tenpenny from san andreas from from gta san andreas who just like hates the people that he like is forced to protect and just wants to like i mean with our guy here with our with our cop morty he just doesn't give a fuck and he is just completely jaded to the system and like as we see throughout the episode we'll just happily kill morty's who he views as like unworthy of of you know participating in the system or whatever because he has to you know they work in morty town (laughs) or like morty slum or whatever it's called uh just dealing with the dregs of society and um yeah like his jaded attitude and then of course there's a little bit of uh sort of redemption at the end of the episode where there's like that little spark where he think that like his partner's unwillingness just yeah. I think he was fucking with him. I mean, obviously he turn he does try to kill, you know, like good Rick yeah. at the end there and and fails. So I, I think there was a spark in there. I think I, well, you know, cuz just based on all the stuff we saw this episode, it feels like everyone here is miserable trapped in this system yeah. except the people at the very top. Everyone's just fucking forced into this role they don't really want. So I feel like cop cop Morty's like cry of desperation was real, but then also was his attempt to murder his own partner to get away with being a corrupt yeah. cop, you know, perpetuating the system. And that's, that's the crime man perpetuating the system is the one crime that that's, it's like the biggest, it's the biggest problem. You know, you can't enable yeah. the shit to continue. And now, now we're just talking about like real life shit. That's where it's, uh, that's, that's it's the thing. To. This episode yeah. felt like real life shit. That's yeah. why I got fucking emotional after watching it. It was yep. like, I don't know if I want to watch that again. Cause it fucking was hard. You know, I had to watch it again. Cause the narrative was so great and I loved all the characters. Yeah. Um, I would say this is the roughest episode of Rick and Morty for me. It's like, so far. I mean, there like, was there, no there's been one some moment rough ones, but this yeah. one's like, Ooh, like, cause there's, yeah, there's no, 
There's no real levity in this episode. Mm -hmm. Like, it's funny. It's entertaining. But it's more of like, it's funny and more of a, oh, shit kind of way. You know, like, it's never like, ah, ha, ha, funny joke. It's more like, oh, you fucking bastards. Like, again, the the Rick cycle where the, when the guy is then hooked up to the chair to be the new source of um, Mm -hmm. candy. Like, that is a dark, dark joke. That is a bleak joke, you know. So there's never a moment of like, just a fun, ha, ha joke joke it's all like oh you know damn and and there's lots of like really good dialogue in this episode mm-hmm, good, like mm-hmm. there's the, so there's one morty who's been literally programmed he's an experimental morty oh, yeah. programmed to be dramatic <laughs> like he's slick programmed morty, to be slick morty as he puts it um to to make you sad and kind of bored which I was fucking <laughs> yeah, hilarious yeah. um but then like his line where they're like yeah, he says, he says like, I want you know, I want the system to be fixed on the Citadel. Like, I want things to to be good here. Mm-hmm. And the other kids, because uh, he, he's at, he's at a wishing well, we have to throw in something important in order to get your wish. And he says, I want things to be good here. And they're like, you better throw in something really important. And he said. Well, I hope so. And he jumps in. And, like, as soon as I he hope said so, the line... I hope so, but I doubt it. But I doubt it. Yeah, yeah, I hope so, but I doubt it. And when he said the line, I knew what he was going to do. And it was just like, yeah. oh, fuck, that's such a... Ah! <laughs> it was fucking powerful, man. That whole thing, incidentally, was a parallel to uh, the film Stand By Me, if you're familiar yeah, with I it. Yeah, I caught that. Yeah, yeah. I caught the stand... Shit. That was Stand By Me. The cop thing is probably... Uh, I mean, there's multiple stories that are like that. The one that yeah. comes to my mind is Training Day. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because it's the same kind of, like, the Rick cop is not just a starry-eyed, you know, like, he he learns quickly, he's quick Mm -hmm. on his feet, and, like, he will shoot someone if he has to, you know, like, he he has the power in him to do that, and when he fucking, you know, kills his partner at the end, he's just like, same old story, Rick's killing Mortys, and it's just like, (sighs) you know, like, yeah. (laughs) It's fucking brutal. Um, Oh, and then, of course, oh, we haven't talked about the uh, the campaign running Morty, you know, the other yes. kind of wage slave Morty guy. He was sort of the other uh, kind of tied into the main plot there. So th- there's just another guy sort of sort of similar to the um, to the uh, candy making Rick, as I, I gave them all a little name. So so campaign Morty there, uh, campaign manager for uh, uh, the, the Morty who's trying to run for office. And of course, it's, it's I, I mean, we're, we're going to get to it, but I love the whole. It's just so brilliant to me. This is the exact perfect way for, like, evil Morty to seize control through, like, this yeah. kind of system. Like, there's no way... I mean, I would have been hugely, like, eyebrow-raising skeptical if, if this Morty had, like, somehow through force taken over the system here. And, in fact, yeah. my one curiosity at the end of the episode was through what exact force is, uh like... Is President Morty control or you know Evil Morty controlling the Ricks that just like assassinate a bunch of the business leaders of the world, like the Illuminati members? Is it just his presidential authority? I guess that's pretty good. I, I just I would assume they just worked for him already. You know, like yeah. they just he mm, he's offering mm. them something. You know, yeah, he must They're, be. He must be. They they pair. We don't know what his angle is yet. Right. We like because. I couldn't tell if his aim is to perpetuate the system but under Morty rule or if mm-hmm. it's to change the system in some way to benefit himself. It's hard to say because at the end, mm-hmm. like the, the council, the, the, the Rick business council are all people who say, you know, we, we were the real ones running things from behind the scenes even before. Right. Um, so for Morty to assassinate all of them means that now there is an opportunity for a full stop change yep. since both the real council of Ricks and the uh, – the uh, you know, C- CEO Ricks are all dead, but who knows what he's trying to do? We, we will can find at, out. We can at least infer from the way that he has gotten into this position and and killing these people, uh, you know, and the way he did, and and being willing to manipulate the system in this way that he certainly does not mind sacrificing pawns on his uh, yeah. on his way to the top. So and he, yeah. I mean. The the main thing that's been brought up about this Morty is that mm. he has this weird, like, receiver thing under his eye. Right. Which makes me think that he's either doing this all under, like, I don't either a Rick's command or maybe he's a Rick in disguise. Maybe like there's something about this Morty mm-hmm. that he's not quite just Morty. That's you know? true. That's true. I really I hope that he's is. not. I really would hate it if it turned out that there was a Rick behind all this. I want this to yeah. be the one Morty who has some special spark that makes him, yeah. you know, equal to a Rick 
in, I mean, in his I don't own know way. what the receiver thing is, but maybe yeah. he's a robot or something. Yeah, I, maybe. There's something about this one that he can push things into his eyeballs. If you remember, so. I think the the his like the the quote unquote evil Rick that we first met him under that turned out yeah. to be a robot, as I recall. So like we don't actually know who his Rick originally was. So maybe there is like yeah. so his Rick is unaccounted for, and you know there's always a Rick to every Morty. So that was certainly something yeah. that I want to know about. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on with this guy, and yeah. I don't know if we'll get any more answers this season. Uh, they might be playing the really long game with this particular mystery. You know? you know, just this was so satisfying the way they doled it out. Like, yeah, I, I was yeah. waiting for it for a long time, and I was, I was, you know, just desperate for it. But like to then have it sprung upon you in such a brilliantly written way, in such a satisfying yeah. way, kind of makes it, it maybe if not completely worth it. But like, just now that we've got it, feels so much better for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Well, is there any other things you have uh, written down or anything? Any other stuff you want to address about this episode? Um, I think there was actually. Um, oh, oh, I, I remember the, the one other thing that I'm interested in is I'm really wondering what is going to be the event that uh, there's got to inevitably be a clash with with evil Morty here, and uh, uh -huh. I'm I'm just really excited to see our Morty, who who has been previously established at least possibly to be the most Morty Morty or the prime yeah. Morty or whatever the it good was. Morty. The good Morty. Yeah, that, that's a fair way to frame it. I'm very yeah. interested to see him do something. And, and even in this very episode, like at the very beginning, um, you know, you, you can just feel Morty beginning to strain yeah. at the bonds of like, when they're like, yeah, you know, he's talking back to Rick's more. And the, the whole, right. his increasing nihilism as we've been going through the series, just showing a, a maturity of the character. I'm very I, interested to see. I definitely have the feeling that the final confrontation of Rick and Morty will mm -hmm. be between the two Mortys. It seems that way to the, me too. The good Morty, the ultimate good versus the ultimate evil Morty. And, um, you know, and maybe Rick, I don't know what Rick will do, but like that that is definitely going to be He'll what be this busy. comes down to, I think. I think <laughs> yeah. they're building up both of these Mortys to be uh, to to have a showdown. At and some you know point. what's great? You know what's great about this? Uh while Rick is like a master of like technology and time and space and a literal god, like what's the one thing that Rick is just bullshit at dealing with? It's dealing with people. And that's the one yeah. thing that politics, like, politics is control yeah. over people. That's the one avenue that Morty could excel at that Rick just has has no luck with. So by, like, controlling the Council of Ricks and, you know, playing his cards right, I totally can understand how a Morty could actually get this kind of leverage. It's been shown to us in a thousand ways how Rick is a total fuck-up yeah. at managing his relationship. So... It just, I, I, I just, I'm just so satisfied with it. And, and the fact that it is relevant to our culture and even our current political climate is just like a cherry on top. And it's, it's fascinating yeah. and great. It's brilliant writing. All right, everybody. Catch you next week. Hope it's as good as this one. Mm, doubtful of that, but we'll see. Doubtful, but, you know. <laughs> Always hope. It's been, it's been a bunch of good episodes in That's a row, true. I think. So, yeah. Looking right. forward to it. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.